okay so we had this small topic remaining relating to right to property okay so we will cover that after that i will send you the pdf you can read the answers from there okay okay ma'am Hey, before we continue, I wanted to inform you about my life mentorship program for LLB students or law aspirants. Law subjects and law topics need detailed clarity. We get that with the help of cases, examples, and detailed explanation. It's definitely not possible to include everything in these short videos. If you find my videos easy to understand and you are looking for some professional help. In preparing for your examination, you can join my live mentorship program. Here you will be getting exam tips, answer writing skills, detailed notes that you can refer for your examination, cases, examples, and in a very easy way, topics will be explained. I have live classes going on for a lot of subjects as of now. To know more about it, you can drop me a message on this WhatsApp number. I'm also helping a lot of students in writing their assignments. If you need any such help or for any queries, any suggestions, you can drop me a message on this WhatsApp number. And now let's continue with our video. Okay, so now right to property, right? It was initially when constitution was framed and it was adopted, it was added as a part of fundamental right. Okay, in Article 19, we get a list of fundamental rights. So if you look at Article 19 of the Constitution of India, you will see that it provides for a list of fundamental rights. So this one was omitted as in article 19 clause 1 clause F was relating to fundamental right to property and that was omitted. So prior to 1978, what was the position and now what is the position? So after independence, when constitution came into force and right to property was included as fundamental right under Article 19.1 F and 31 of Part 3 in fundamental rights part, these two concepts were added, making it an enforceable right. When these are added in Part 3, it becomes enforceable, right? It's something which is guaranteed to us. We can directly go to Supreme Court and we can ask for its enforcement. Initially, it was all good, but... There were some uh, land reform laws which were being introduced by different state governments because once constitution was adopted right under directive principles, different states or the, the states were having responsibilities, right? Different departments were having responsibilities to carry on some developmental activities to provide welfare, ensure welfare of people. For that, they needed to take up a lot of different projects. But for that, they were not having enough land because mostly lands were held by Jamindars who would have big areas of land. So many land reform laws were introduced in different, different states. And under that law, what they said is one per person can hold maximum up to this much property. He cannot hold this much property, only this much he can hold whatever excess he is having government to acquire that. That was happening in many states. And on the other hand, right to property was guaranteed as a fundamental right. So these two things were clashing, right? And as we know that if something is going against provisions of constitution, we can approach the court, right? And court can apply judicial review also. So there was a lot of confusion wherein judiciary was trying to also ensure that, okay, states are also given the freedom that they can carry on with the developmental activities, but there were plenty of cases which were being filed challenging validity of those laws. So ultimately it was decided that it would be better that we remove it from fundamental rights. And what we do is we add it in some other part of the constitution, not a fundamental right, but a constitutional right. If there is nothing which is taking away your property, you are like otherwise free. Someone cannot illegally take it. But yes, some legislation might come. Government may take it under some established law. Okay, so initially it was all good. Added as a part of fundamental right and it was an enforceable right. However, during the first decade of independence era, it was felt that right to property as a fundamental right was a great impediment in and uh, in uh, enshrining a just social socioeconomic order and a source of conflict when states 
was to acquire private property for public purposes, particularly expansion of rails, roads, industries, etc. How will states ensure these developmental work? How would state ensure socioeconomic order? There was a lot of clash that was going on. So there the difficulty took place. In order to get rid of this hurdle, Supreme Court in a historic case known as fundamental rights case or Keswananda Bharti case held that right to property is no part of basic structure of constitution. Therefore, parliament can acquire and take away private property of persons concerned good and in public interest. If public interest is there in question for public interest, private property may also be taken. Private right to property is a was a fundamental right until that time but it is not like a basic structure of constitution that you cannot change or something like independence of judiciary or judicial review that's a basic structure but fundamental right to property is not a basic structure you can make changes you can bring a law if that is at all required and after that by 44th constitutional amendment parliament passed 44th constitutional amendment, which made right to property an ordinary right given under constitution under article 300A. It was omitted from part three. It was no more considered as a fundamental right. However, the Supreme Court in one of the cases has made it clear that executive cannot deprive a person of his property without the authority of law. The state can acquire a person's property for public purpose on payment of compensation. This is very important. You would hear many times that a government has acquired someone's property, maybe for construction of metro, extension of metro, for construction of some highways, etc. Their government would simply not take the property, but adequate compensation would be provided. For that, there is a method of calculating compensation also. Right? So they would calculate the compensation that would be provided, not like arbitrarily property would be simply taken from a, a private person. That does not happen. Which need to be necessarily just equivalent of the value of the property so acquired, but such compensation must not be illusory or irrational dis, uh, appropriate. It, sh it should not happen that the property taken is this much and money paid is this much. There has to be like a balance. That's why we have a proper method of calculating the compensation as well. Based on that, it, it happens. If somebody is not satisfied with the compensation, they can even uh, get the matter noticed by the state as well. Okay, so those provisions are there. But apart from that, it can be taken away by the state if required for any of the public purposes like construction of highway, extension of metro and so many other things that we see. Latest position with regard to India is well expressed by the Supreme Court of India in Indian Handicraft Emporium versus Union of India wherein the court observed that right to property is a human right as a constitutional right under Article 30A, but it is not a fundamental right. It is indeed a statutory right, but each and every claim to property would not be a property right. So whatever right we have, it is simply given in Article 300A of Constitution. It is no more a fundamental right guaranteed under Part 3. So whatever provisions are there, compensation, if you are not happy with the compensation, how can you proceed the state? All those processes mentioned and like that only we need to follow. So initially it was a fundamental right and as of now it is not a fundamental right, it is simply a constitutional right. 44th constitutional amendment was introduced in 1978. That's why you would see prior to 1978 before this change was made. Right Before this change was made what was the position? And after this change, what is the position at present? Okay. Is this topic clear? Yes, ma'am.